Taking the field for UNLV in left field, number four, Parker Smith. In center field, number 25, Rylan Charles. In right field, number 14, Cade Higgins. At third base, number 23, Gunner Myro. At shortstop, number nine, Brendan O'Sullivan. At second base, number five, J.P. Hess. At first base, number 47, Austin Perizic. Catching is number 20, Bailey Seeger. And on the mound, number 26, Sam Simon. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 UNLV Hustlin' Rebels. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise if you're able. Remove your hats and shake the flag with your right hand over your heart for this evening's rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. From Earl E. Wilson Stadium here on the campus of UNLV, this is another edition of UNLV Hustlin' Rebels Baseball. Along with Dan Dolby, I'm Matt Neverett bringing you the action here on a Sunday series finale as the Scarlet and Gray take on the Bradley Braves, final game of a three-game series. And UNLV going for the series sweep here Sunday morning. 93 winners on Friday, followed by a 4-1 victory yesterday. Another game featuring just two pitchers overall for the Rebels. Albert Robles went six and two thirds. Matthew Maloney got the save by closing it out over the final two and a third innings. Stan Stolte and company turning it over to Sam Simon here on a Sunday morning into afternoon as the five and one Rebels take on the one and four Braves. UNLV looking for their sixth straight win. And Dan, Sam Simon in his only other outing of the year a week ago today, phenomenal against Pacific, seven shutout innings and a victory. Yeah, Sammy was brilliant last weekend. He's been able to kind of settle into a role as a starter this year. He kind of, last few years, he was looking for his niche, right? He was trying to figure out if he was a starter. He came in relief a number of times. He's kind of a spot guy, but he uh, committed in the off season to get into the starting, starting role. And he did that with a combination of both the weight room, strength and training, uh, conditioning, diet, and then a lot of bullpen hours. So. Uh, co pitching coach Corey Vanderhoek has been really pleased with the progress and looking for another great day from Sam. A six foot three, 200 pound junior out of Centennial High School here in Las Vegas. Toes the slab this afternoon. He was 0-1 with a 5'7 ERA last year. He made just two starts as mentioned. And really transitioning and blossoming into that role here during the offseason. He's got Bailey Seeger doing the catching. Filling up the battery this afternoon, morning into afternoon. Austin Krizik at first, JP Heft at second base. First start here at the Earl for Brendan O'Sullivan. He'll get the start at shortstop with Gunnar Myro, Bishop Gorman product and younger brother of Paul Myro IV. Over at third, Parker Schmidt in left, Ryland Charles in center with Cade Higgins in right field. Santino Panaro doing the designated hitting. Here's Ryan Vogel for the Bradley Braves wearing their red and black alternate tops, the gray road pants. The black clad Sam Simon deals a first pitch fastball just low for ball one. Underway at 11.05 here on a 61 degree morning. 
beautiful on the Sunday on the getaway day. Vogel hitting four of 20 so far this year. 0 for four yesterday in the loss. He takes a called strike. Count goes one ball, one strike. Paul Saucedo signaling balls and strikes behind the plate. Albert Ruiz on the first base side. John Bostwick at second. And Guillermo Rodriguez, the umpire, behind the third base box. Vogel swings and gets a piece of this breaking pitch. And with Sam Simon ahead one and two, we may see his newest pitch. He added a curveball in the offseason. He did. He worked on that really hard. And spring training and there's a couple of exhibitions. He was able to kind of perfect that a little bit. Ground ball back up the middle. Charging his heft. Second baseman's got it. Turns and fires to first base. Retiring the leadoff man, Ryan Vogel. A hard hit ball. Better play by Heft to get around it for the out. You know, Sam, you know, we talked about adding that curve ball to his repertoire. He, he's... Uh, over the last couple of years, been trying to find that third pitch, something he can he can go to because he's got a decent fastball. He's going to be right around 89, sometimes at 91, but he needed that breaking ball, and he's really been able to perfect it a little bit. Right fielder Tyrese Johnson takes ball one. Pitch breaking off the outside. One out, nobody on top of the very first inning. Rebels looking for their sixth straight win of the year. They haven't won more than five straight in two years. Breaking ball up, two balls, no strikes to Johnson. Hitting 333 out of the two slot was one of four yesterday. After going one for four in the opening game of the series Friday night. So matching one for four lines. He's got the hands held by the belt as he swings and chops one straight down. In front of Bailey Seeger, a guy that uh, we were interested to get a look at behind the plate as well. Chase Gallego started the first two games of the series on the bench here in the finale. You know, one thing about the Rebel pitching staff so far this year, it's being able to get ahead in the count, which is really an advantage as we see this one lifted into shallow right. Johnson back to Higgins, who backs up and makes the catch in front of the warning track. Two up, two down. So far, so good for Sam Simon. As he'll face off against Timmy O'Brien trying to go one, two, three. But yesterday, the only two real hits that uh, Robles gave up were deep in the count. He was one and two and oh and two. And those are the two hardest balls that were hit. So Corey Vanderhoek actually was talking to the pitching staff about that uh, pregame today about getting ahead and using a waste pitch. Robles was excellent and efficient yesterday. Simon picking up where he left off, getting ahead on a called strike. Robles, six and two-thirds innings yesterday, gave up a run on just three hits from the third through the seventh. He had a stretch of 12 straight set down. It was mowing him down in order. Quickly nothing and two here to O'Brien. Right-handed batting first baseman with Logan Delgado, the DH, awaiting on deck. Simon, out of the stretch, delivers. Swing and a miss, strike three. There's the curveball. It's strike three for out three. And it's a one, two, three, top of the first, spun up by Sam Simon. Ryland Charles to lead things off in the bottom of the first inning against Jack Stellano, the lefty going for Bradley. Bottom of the first coming up from a scoreless tie. Bottom of the first Ryan. inning here in the final game of three between UNLV and Bradley. Matt Neverett along with Dan Dolby. Jack Stellano, lefty, making the start for the visiting Bradley Braves. Stellano in his second outing of the year. Left-hander at six feet, 200 pounds, transfer from Heartland Community College. 
Third year player up against the veteran center fielder, Ryland Charles, to lead things off for the Rebels. Ryland squares to butt on the first pitch. His slider in for a called strike. Ryland, who's one for nine in the series, pulled it back and takes a strike. Stellano, through four innings a week ago today, one unearned run and a no decision. Two walks and no strikeouts. In a five to three Bradley loss against Western Kentucky. Count now even to Ryland Charles. He's one of nine this series, as mentioned, his only hit from extra bases. It was a double yesterday thrown out after falling. He thought about stretching it to a triple. It's this one off the hands in the air to the right side of the infield. Moving towards the base at second is Bo Durbin. Second, second baseman's second gloved it with two hands as Charles five, pops out to begin the first inning. Here's J.P. Heft, one out, nobody on. Heft three of his first seven. Here in the series, nine of his first 23 in the Scarlet and Gray. 391 hitter. After the junior from San Clemente, California. Takes high. Been a welcome addition to the lineup here, both defensively and at the plate. I think when uh, he was brought in, they were looking at him more as a defensive type guy, but showing a lot of prowess at the plate and a lot of discipline, too. Yesterday, he was taking everything to the opposite field and was able to hit a couple into the four hole. Second baseman did make an adjustment later, but uh, he's uh, he's been absolutely fantastic. Two for three and was hit by a pitch in the win yesterday. A lot of <laughs> Rebels were hit yesterday. Yeah. Five total in the game, including three in a row at one point. Hefts ahead, three balls, no strikes. With Parker Schmidt on deck, he takes a strike. Still in a good hitter's count at three and one. Schmidt, the left fielder in the three hole. Kate Higgins batting fourth, playing in right. Austin Krizik at first, batting fifth. Brendan O'Sullivan hitting in the sixth spot, playing at shortstop. Heft hits a hard ground ball to the backhand side of the shortstop, Taylor. Sets the feet and fires a strike in time to first base. Two up and two away in the bottom of the first inning. Still no score as Parker Schmidt saunters into the plate. We see some good defensive play from the middle infield of the uh, Bradley Braves. Durbin and Taylor have really held things down over the last couple days and made some nice plays. Here's Parker Schmidt, three for five in the series. Watching all the way on a first pitch fastball downstairs. Yeah, the Pinch hit double on Friday. At the start of the DH slot yesterday. It was 0 for 2 to start, then had base hits in his last two trips to the dish. He leans away here and it moves ahead, two balls, no strikes. And getting a chance to play some uh, outfield for the Rebs today. You know, being the DH, it's good. You try to get some rhythm going, but sometimes when you're playing every pitch, it, uh, it really mean, means something to you. He swings here and pops one up, fouled on the first base side. Timmy O'Brien gives it a look. First baseman will watch it bounce in the fourth row. Now, Schmidt, we talked about it yesterday. He's a utility guy. He can play infield. He can play outfield. He's done some catching, so it would be really valuable for the Rebels going into this campaign. Infield pulled a step towards the third base side as Schmidt takes high. Jack Stellano falls behind 3-1. and one. Stellano last year at Heartland Community College, 5-1 and one with a 3-8-2 ERA, although he started just three games. 15 appearances. Walks Parker Schmidt here. A five pitch free pass. Gives the Rebels the first base runner of the game either way. For Stellano, that's his third walk in four and two thirds innings. The no strikeouts yet on the year. And the Rebels will look to strike first. Here's Kate Higgins. Let's see what uh, the Rebels get aggressive early on the base path. Parker Schmidt's three for four in stolen bases so far this year. And you got a contact hitter up. So you may see some type of uh, hit and run. Straight steal going on from Coach Higgy over at third base. Try to generate some offense early. Kate Higgins takes high. Ahead of ball and no strikes. In fact, Parker Schmidt's three steals, the only three successful steals for the Rebels all year. Keeping an eye on him at first is Stellano. The pickoff throw not in time. Well, we talked about that yesterday, though. You know, Friday night, out of their ten hits, seven were for multiple bases. So didn't have a lot of chances to steal from first base because you're not going to get real aggressive from second to third. UNLV. And they get their third straight win against Bradley, their sixth straight win overall. As Higgins now ahead, two balls, no strikes after that heater missing high. UNLV has also scored first in each of the two games this weekend. They'll try to do the same once more. O'Brien holding on at first. Schmidt with an average lead. Stolano spins a slider outside. And for the third time in four batters, he's worked a three-ball count, 3-0 three and o to Kate Higgins here. Yeah, we talked about that's key for the Rebels the last couple games and even last weekend. But uh, Stellano following behind early. Out of the stretch. Clips the outer third with a fastball. 
It's in for strike one to Higgins, who was watching all the way. Hitting 333 to start the year. Home run in three RBIs. That bomb two days ago. Who in a run on a base hit yesterday? He swings at a fastball down the heart of the plate and fouls it straight back. That'll clear the yard over the press box and move the count to three and two. So give the runner Schmidt at first a break on the pitch here. He's speedy enough that anything through the hole is probably going to advance to third. It's about the only benefit of going 3-2 here, right? Correct. Smith with a short lead. He goes. Higgins swings and hits it in the air the other way. Softly to left field. That'll drop for a base hit. Rounding second. Zooming to third is Parker Schmidt. Here comes Higgins to second. The throw from the left fielder Lucky is into third base. And that's a hustle double for Cade Higgins. And a two-base advancement for Parker Schmidt to put runners on second and third. Here with two outs in the bottom of the first. Nobody better for the Rebels as Austin Krizik works his way to the right-handed batter's box. Higgs did a good job right there. Got fisted a little bit, was able to muscle that because he's strong. Out into left field over the third baseman. Over the third baseman's head uh, with Schmidt already on the break. He was easily able to get into third. Came up a little bit limping a little bit, but Coach Higgy's talking to him. He seems to be okay. First pitch to Krizik. Down and in by the feet, and it hits him. Another hit batter for the Rebels, and that'll load the bases. Six, it's not a guy you want to face in that situation, but uh, I don't think that's the preferred result yeah, either. Yeah, that's maybe late in the game you're going to think about getting Krizik over. We're going to get a mound visit from uh, the pitching coach Warner early in the game here. So we talked about Stellano's first outing. He, only, he went four <laughs> innings, actually didn't give up any earned runs in his previous start. Ended up leaving the game and not, uh, and Bradley came back and won that game two to one. Two to one. That was the one where they uh, they were, it was one to one into the seventh, and Western Kentucky ended up scoring and it was a five to three win for the Hilltoppers. But Stolano got the no decision. Hit the only run that he allowed it was a base hit, a wild pitch by Stolano that moved the runner up to second, and then an RBI single. He gave up four hits in that game, all of them singles. Yeah, you know, and he may have been on some type of pitch count. We we don't know at this point, but. Uh, Early mound visit right there from Coach Warner. Walking back, and infield came in, so they're talking defensively and see what they're going to do against the Rebels here with bases loaded, two outs here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, prime time RBI opportunity for Brendan O'Sullivan, the shortstop. Right-handed batter takes high for ball one. O'Sullivan out of Pleasanton, California, a transfer from San Joaquin Delta College, one of the better JUCOs in that Central Valley. All his teammates were, ex-teammates were up at the game at Pacific watching in the stands. Both of those schools in Stockton. It's the changeup. Misses outside and again, the Rebel in a good hitter's count. O'Sullivan, who's just one of three this year, starts out two balls, no strikes. He's got to be sitting on fastball here. Delano trying to find the zone, but he misses. And the count goes 3-0. and Another concerning thing is that his velocity is dipping Already, yeah. he was 86 to 88 to get it going. You're not even through the first inning. He's already down into the mid, low 80s, 84 to 85, and he walks Brendan O'Sullivan. He'll get the RBI on the bases loaded free pass as Schmidt scores from third, Higgins to third, Krizik to second, an RBI on a walk for Brendan O'Sullivan. Bases still loaded for Santino Panaro. We're already seeing a number of Bradley Braves Heading down to the bullpen. Quickly, like yeah. Dead Quickly, well. yeah. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> they, they, are. they were on the hop. They are hustling. So bases loaded, two outs. Santino Panaro takes a strike. That is as uh, guaranteed a take as you'll see after a four-pitch walk. Absolutely. Panaro batting with a one nothing lead, trying to extend it. 0 for 3 yesterday, rather two days ago. It's this one off the hand straight back. Screen holding it in, and the count goes nothing in two. Panaro had... Three rollover ground outs to the first baseman two days ago. He was off yesterday as Alex Pimentel got the start and left. Panaro doing the DHing this morning. Nowhere to put him. Here's the 0-2 from Jack Stellano. Swung on and fouled out of play on the left field side. That's Panaro just trying to stay alive on a pitch moving away from him. Yeah, that's kind of textbook by both Panaro and Ryland Charles. They'll get deep in the count behind. They're able to foul off a number of pitches till they get something that they really want to drive. Stolano misses high. One ball, two strikes to the that's, Vegas native. That's actually a good waste pitch by Stolano there. 0-2, you got to get something up high, hoping that uh, 
get Pinaro to chase something. Pair of lefties warming up in the bullpen as Pinaro hits a soft ground ball back up the middle. Charging is Durbin, second baseman's mm -hmm. got it. Takes a step to the right and steps on second base himself to retire Brendan O'Sullivan. But the Rebels on the board in the bottom of the first. One run scoring on one hit, no errors, and three men left on base through one inning full. It's the Rebels one, Braves nothing. UNLV enters the second leading by a 1-0 tally. Sending one through seven up to the plate. And an RBI and a walk for Brandon O'Sullivan to get the scoring started. Logan Delgado, first man up for Bradley. Trailing entering into the second inning. Third straight game that the Rebels have scored first. First pitch swinging is Delgado. Lashes one down the left field side, but Fallon out of play down by the pair of left-handers roaming up for the Bradley Braves. Jax Delano, starting pitcher, had to labor through the first. All the damage. And base runners with two outs. Delgado, three of 17 this year. So he takes a swing and a miss. Beautiful off-speed pitch from Simon to go ahead, nothing and two. That's a great job right there. That off-speed pitch, if he can master that this season, he's going to have a good year. That's a that's a weapon for him. He feels out of the stretch. No two pitches in the dirt. Good pitch right there, though. We keep talking about the Rebel pitchers getting ahead in the count and then not giving anything in the zone, hoping to get somebody to chase something. The other thing that you notice is Sam Simon's working at a pretty high pace. Elevates a fastball. Delgado thought about it, able to hold up on a pitch called a ball. They'll appeal down to third. No, he did not, says Guillermo Rodriguez. No wind to speak of on a beautiful Sunday morning. Some light clouds overhead as Simon deals on two and two. Just able to get a piece as Delgado as he knocks it back to the screen. Delgado doing the DH and getting in the cleanup spot. Isaac Sobieszczyk, the third baseman on deck with Bo Durbin at second. Cole Lucky, the left fielder, number seven in the lineup and on the card. Nick Hosey catching Ryan Taylor, the shortstop batting ninth. A pitch in the dirt, swung on and missed. Bailey Seeger, the catcher's got it. Snaps the throw down to first in time. Strikeout 2-3 on the putout. Back-to-back -back K's for Simon. Outstanding uh, little sequence of pitching right there. Starting him off with the fastball, was able to get that ball out of play, but then the next couple pitches going off speed, just keeping them off balance a little bit. Strikeout presented by Bell for Property Restoration. As OBS check in from the right, third baseman takes a pitch downstairs from Sam Simon. Sam had four strikeouts to two walks and seven shutout innings at Pacific last week. A couple of Kings already today. He misses inside. Falls behind 2-0. It's been great to watch him blossom into Longer relief rolls and now a starting position this year. Former Centennial Bulldog gets a called strike. Two balls and one strike to Sobi You know, last year, remember, he had his older brother with us mm -hmm. also. And he's not the little brother anymore. He's the guy. So he's really stepped up. Dots a fastball over the outside there. Beautiful spot called for a strike by Paul Saucedo. From 2-0 to 2-2. Simon looking to come all the way back against the freshman Sobi Eschik. 6'2", 205-pounder. That's a big body in from the right. 
Breaking ball. Mm. Bounced in there. Great take. Started in the zone, but fell out. Correct. You're going to see on his breaking ball, you're going to get a little more vertical drop than you were the, the horizontal movement. Sammy throws that with a pretty, pretty, pretty high spin, but not... Uh, 3-2 pitch, chopped to third. It's off the glove of Gunnar Myro. A fielding error will give Bradley their first base runner of the game. So Biescic reaching on Myro's first collegiate error. That one a bouncing ball right at him. Tried to field it side card left and just hit off the end of the webbing. Yeah, that's the, the key to playing here at early Wilson Stadium. The ball will take some, some funky bounces, but that's just one where you let it get down to the body way too late. Takes a high bounce, goes right over the left shoulder. That brings up Bo Durbin, left-handed batting second baseman who takes a strike. Simon going both inside and outside with that heater, locating it well already. Durbin, a slow offensive start to the year, batting 176, three of his first 17. Only hit in the series was a double that scored a run yesterday. Takes a strike, change up moves in one and one. But his value has certainly been displaced with the defense. He's been phenomenal with the glove. Absolutely. One out, one on, one nothing. UNLV leads here in the top of the second. Throw to first, just not in time. Grizzik yep. applying the tag on Sobieszczyk, but it popped out of the glove. Gunnar Myro over there, he's going to be a good one. Again, he's another guy that Reb's bought in, can play multiple positions. Got to get some experience, got to get some reps over there, and he'll learn the the nuances of early Wilson Stadium in the field here. And that Another one throw to first, they got, got him. him. Simon picks off Sobieszczyk. That's a way to wipe out an error. And that's the second out of the second inning. Great move by Simon right there. Really a quick step flip. Was able to get that ball right at the bag. And Krizik was able to just hold the ball there. And base runner actually slid right into the bag, yeah, into the glove. Always good when you could have them tag themselves out, right? Correct. All of a sudden, base is empty with two down for Durbin, who lines one to right. In comes Higgins. It takes a bounce in front for a single. That one with a lot of top spin. No chance for Cade to make a play on it. So that pickoff definitely changes the complexion of the inning. Absolutely. With uh, Durbin did a really good job right there. He was able to stay on that one inside pitch, but stayed with it. Took the ball to right field, being the left-handed hitter. But that, uh, that pickoff, that, that's just big with two outs now. Especially in a one-run game. Correct. As Cole Lucky takes a big hack but comes up empty. Right-handed batting left fielders, 2 of 11 to get the year started. So for three yesterday with a ground out, a pop out, and a strikeout. Pops this one up to the right field side. Shallow into the outfield. Out goes Heft. Second baseman calls off Krizik and makes the catch on the move in fair territory. A lot of ground, but Heft up to the task. In the top of the second for Bradley, no runs on one hit, one error, and one man left on through an inning and a half. UNLV leads the Bradley Braves one to nothing. UNLV Baseball is presented by Parkway Tavern, official partner of UNLV Athletics, and your official home of Rebels on the road. With over 250 beers, 24-7 gaming, and seven Valley locations, there's no better place to catch the game than Parkway Tavern. Along with Dan Dolby, I'm Matt Neverett here from Earl E. Wilson Stadium. Rebels looking for a clean sweep of the visiting Bradley Braves out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Winners by a 9-3 score on Friday, 4-1 yesterday, and they lead it so far today. Strand the bases loaded in the bottom of the first. The damage could have been worse, but they did drive the pitch count of Jack Stolano way up. First pitch of the second will be his 30th of the game, and it'll come to Bailey Seeger. Great job defensively. Picking up after an error in the top of the second, though, for UNLV, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Simon did a really good job of working out of trouble right there. Was able to get the ball extended couple times against the right-handed batter, and all they can do is hit a little flare out into the right center area. Heft 
Made a really good job. Of Dude, that ball is hammered. Bailey Seeger crushes one to the gap in left center. That's down. Over to get it is the center fielder Vogel, and a great route limits Bailey Seeger to a seeing eye single to the gap in left center. But jumping all over that one for his third hit and five at bats of the year is the Highlands Ranch Colorado native. Love the aggressiveness right there. He went up ready to swing, trying to jump all over Stellano again here in the second after his troubles in the first. That puts us in a really good position right now. Seeger on first as Gunnar Myro heads to the dish for the first time. Slightly closed off stance for the right-handed batting freshman. Watching all the way, change up, elevated, but in there for a strike from Stellano. Gunnar has a very different approach at the plate than his brother Paul does. Gunnar stands a little bit taller, hands high. We'll hit for some power this year. Very short lead for Seeger as Myro hits one out of play. Foul ball out down the right field line. Yeah, Seeger is not going to be a real threat to move. Catching average speed, but uh, right now we're just trying to be getting some more Rebels into scoring position. Gunner has a great opportunity here. Whoa. This pitch all the way to the backstop. He threw that one way over the head of the catcher, Nick Hosey, as Stellano, who had a very costly wild pitch that you know, caused him his only run, not earned, but the only run that he allowed in his only other start. It was because of a wild pitch moving the runner from first to second. That one may have hit the mascot if he was back there. That one almost took out Trevor Kennedy up here. So now a runner in scoring position is Seeger. Myro on one and two, stares down Stellano. He deals, and misses high at two. Stellano is really struggling with his balance right now. Last two pitches being real high, he's trying to overthrow to compensate some of the things that he's been struggling with so far this game. On two and two, Stellano looks to second, turns to the dish and fires. Myro gets a piece of it, and he takes out the first base coach. Gunnar Myro, six foot tall, 190 pound true freshman out of Bishop Gorman. One of the top players in the state. They were lucky to get a player of his caliber. Anyone would be. Number three, number two rather, second baseman, third baseman I should say in the state. The number 17 ranked player in his class. Swings here at two and two and fights one straight back. Foul ball into the bleacher seats behind home plate. Gunner committed really early in his recruiting process after a sophomore year to the Rebels. You know, the, day, the way things work out these days with transfer portal and the letters of intent, you know, you always have to wait until they actually sign their, get that signature on the paper, but he held true. He goes the other way on a line drive, fading towards the line. It's just foul into the corner. He's been working that opposite field approach here in this at bat. Stellano's been going up and away from him. Yeah, you can see he's kind of working inside out against Stellano right here. This point in the count right now, he actually sit on a little bit of a breaking ball. He might be able to pull something. Ryland Charles on deck as Stellano deals the 2-2 to Gunnar Myro. Fastball over the inside, called for strike three. First strike out of the day for Stellano it is the first out of the second inning. Myro down via the K. That wraps the lineup back around to the top as Ryland Charles saunters up there. You know, Myro, he's just got to get more reps. We talked about that at third base. At the plate also, you know, making that jump from high school ball, no matter whether you're the second recruited guy in the state you know it's a different look at the collegiate level especially d1 yeah good arm side run for stolano as charles squares to bunt fouls it straight down caught the leg of the catcher hosey on the way by charles is kind of known for that little walk the dog uh, pull bunt down first base line when he sees the first baseman playing behind the bag as deep as he is he's got the green light to do whatever he feels is necessary He's trying to get it going offensively. Just one of 10 this series, six of 31 to start the year. Find a way on any way. Is this pitch up and in, and it hit him in the knob of the bat. Tried to hold up, but got his hands out there and fouled that one off. That, that actually was uh, one I think he'd really like to have back. Yeah, it looked like it was in on the hands and the wrist, but yeah, you can tell by the batter's reaction on those. Immediately he knew that he had hit it off what looked like the butt of the bat under the hand. Seeger on second, Charles behind nothing and two with one out in a one nothing game. Rebels lead it in the second. Here's the pitch, that's a fastball low. Charles popped out to the second baseman Durbin right in front of the bag at second to lead off the home half of the first inning. Rebels forced 29 pitches from Stellano through an inning of play. It's taken Sam Simon 28 pitches to get through two. Looks like there's only one 
Brave out there throwing actively in the bullpen. Just the one lefty. It's Charles hits this one in the air. Foul ground, third base side. Sobieschik dives, but hot corner man can't get it in front of that third base coaching box. And Charles, sigh of relief as he lives to see another one. Charles looks a little unsettled at the plate right now. His feet are a little, uh, a little bouncy right now. Some of those lefties, you go back to Ichiro, he, his feet were never set when he made contact with the baseball. But Charles is right now, and, he, and he's kind of in that mode where he, he can kind of drag, even going to opposite field. He's already stepping out of the box, so we'll see if he can stay a little balanced here. Another one-two from Stolano. Grounded to second. Picked up on the second hop by Durbin. Looks the runner to third as Seeger broke on contact, but turns and fires to first in time. Seeger does advance 90 feet. As Charles has now popped out and grounded out to Durbin at second today. Two outs, runner on third for J.P. Heft, trying to extend this 1-0 lead. Seeger on third. I gotta, gotta have a chat with him. I spent uh, six years living in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, where he's from. Went to my freshman year of high school at his rival high school. Heft pops it up. First base side, drifting into foul ground is O'Brien. In the first base coaching box, he'll make the catch as a leadoff single is stranded on. Rebels with a strikeout, a ground out, and a pop out and foul ground to follow. In the second, no runs on a hit, no errors, and a man left on. On to the third we go through two. It's the Rebels on top, one to nothing. Eight nine one due up for the Bradley Braves. UNLV on top, one to nothing. Nick Hosey followed by Ryan Taylor and then Ryan Vogel at the top of the lineup. First three up against Sam Simon. So far, so good for the Vegas-born right-hander. As his first pitch to the left-handed batting, Hosey misses low. Hosey 0 for 4 this year, as is the on-deck batter, Ryan Taylor. Second start of the year for both of these guys at the bottom of the lineup. For 16th year head coach, Elvis Dominguez, of Cuban descent. Pitch from Simon misses away. Two balls, no strikes. Got to have respect for anybody named Elvis, especially living here in Vegas. Yeah, he just has to walk around and tell people his name's Elvis, and you get about three or four other guys around here saying, hey, me too. <laughs> Pitch just low, and the count, three balls, no strikes. Of course, the big controversy with the Elvis recently is the uh, company that has the Elvis people doing the wedding is, is no more. The, uh, yeah. Elvis's <laughs> estate had beef with that. They were an icon here. A four-pitch walk leads off the top of the third inning as Hosey reaches base for the first time this year. Brings up Ryan Taylor. 0 for 4 with three strikeouts thus far in the campaign. Yeah, you mentioned the success that the Hustlin' Rebels had on the diamond yesterday across campus for all sports. Man, there was, a, there was a good day to be a Rebel yesterday with men's basketball team beating number 22 Colorado State at home 66-60 uh, last night. Huge win in Mountain West standings. Taylor squares to bunt, misses, and the runner's caught in a rundown between first and second. Krizik fires to Heft, back to Krizik. Krizik to Heft once more, and he applies the tag for the putout. So score that one, 2-3, two, 4-3, three, 4. Three, four. Or rather, 6. All that was 6s, so 2-3, three, 6-3, six, three, six. 
well-executed rundown. And again, a leadoff batter reaching, but unable to do anything. That's the second time that Bradley's had a base runner thrown out on the pass as Simon gets a swing and a miss. He's ahead quickly, nothing in two. The other success is the Lady Rebels clinch a third straight Mountain West Conference championship in, up at Reno, beating the uh, in-state rivals by about 40 last night. Pulled up a number that I saw since January 24th, over the last calendar month. Men's and women's basketball teams, they combined 16 and one. Yeah, the, the men's, they're eight of the last nine, I believe. Yeah, they, they, they very easily could be 8-0 during that same stretch as well. Correct. And then the softball team ended up winning a doubleheader yesterday. 2-2 two -two pitch, hammered to right center field. Into the gap goes Higgins. It takes a bounce on the warning track and rolls all the way to the fence. Rounding second, slamming on the brakes as Ryan Taylor as the throw goes into the cutoff man, Heft. And that's the first hit of the year for Ryan, T Ryan Taylor. And it's an extra base knock. A two bagger puts the tying run in scoring position with one out for Ryan Vogel. Again, Dan, another Vogel, base one, runner immediately wiped out, followed by a base hit. This game could be very different if not for those two outs on the base pass. Yeah, I mean, great piece of hitting right there by Taylor. But he did whiff on the sacrifice bunt attempt. Rebels are able to get that first lead runner off in the rundown. That run would have scored. Lead off hitter Ryan Vogel skies one in the infield. It'll be the shortstop O'Sullivan taking just a couple of steps in, battling with the sun and making a two-hand catch in front of the chest. Vogel drops to 0 for 2. Taylor returns to second. Now two outs That's in the tying run on second and a one to nothing tight one. Tyrese Johnson trying to extend the inning. Yeah, all of a sudden we're talking Run and Rebel basketball, they are within a game. Game, game, game of first place. Game yeah. of first place. Pick off throw to second, him. and they don't get him. Oh, it looked like the throw beat him there and have to apply the tag, but John Bostwick, the crew chief, signaled safe. The ball was there in plenty of time. He just might have missed on the tag, and Taylor may be able to get his hand in underneath that. Wow, they have those timing plays down pat already here early in the season. Big swing and a miss from Johnson. Ball bouncing away from Seeger, but he's able to keep it near him. Yeah, you mentioned the standings in the Mountain West for men's basketball. The Rebels are really in a good spot. They play two teams that uh, have big implications in San Diego State and Reno this coming up. Swing and a miss from Johnson in the count, nothing in two. I mean, without that five-point play at the end of the Utah State game that gave the win to the Aggies, UNLV would be tied for second, a half game back behind the Aggies. The 0-2, swing and a miss, strike three. Slider fooled him, Johnson down on strike. Simon's got a trio of Ks, and we've played two and a half. In the top of the third inning, no runs. One hit, no errors, and a man left on. Bottom of the third coming up, Rebels looking to add to their one to nothing lead. UNLV with the heart of their lineup, set to get it going. Back with the bottom of the third, Parker Schmidt, Kane Higgins, and Austin Krizik. A trio of power batters to lead it off in a 1-0 contest. 
all three of them reached in the first inning, starting with Parker Schmidt, who walked and scored the game's only run. Right-handed batter, no batting gloves. Takes a called ball high. Jack Stolano, Bradley starter, now through 45 pitches. He deals out of the full wind here and misses inside with a changeup. Parker Schmidt still three of his first five in the series, seven of his first 11 in the Scarlet and Gray this season. A more than welcome addition. Multiple levels of this team as he takes high, catches, plays outfield, runs well. He is a total team player. Transfer from Utah Tech. Stolano's laboring a little bit right now. His fastball's down to the 85 mile an hour mark and he misses wide there. Four pitch walk to lead off the inning. Schmidt makes his second free pass of the game. Third walk of the game issued by Stolano. One with a double. In that first game, the Rebels had 10 strikeouts from their hitters. Higgins watching a chest high fastball for strike one. Although game two, which was a, admittedly a much cleaner game for both sides, sure. just three strikeouts for UNLV and none after the third inning. Yeah, it, well, a test to the starting pitching by Bradley that night, too. They did a good job of keeping the Rebels in check, but uh, the Rebels were able to get some multiple base hits and you know, get on the scoreboard early. Kind of hold on. One and one count to Cade Higgins. His double in the first inning already his third of the year. Mm. Thought about it there. Takes a called strike. Bit of a delayed signal behind home plate. Pushes the count one and two with nobody out. Runner on first is Schmidt. You may see some movement by Schmidt here. He's got a short lead. Doesn't go. Is the pitch way outside. Although the catcher Hosey with a point back immediately as if to say that's exactly where we wanted it. Yep. That's a good pitch by Stolano there. It's a really tough lefty-lefty matchup here. Does induce a 2-2 count as Stolano deals. Higgins lines one through the left side of the infield for a base hit. Up to second goes Schmidt as it's picked up by Cole Lucky. And just another good piece of two-strike hitting Higgins, an advanced hitter in all assets of the game. Well, absolutely. We, we've obviously seen him hit for power. Hit a 413-yard shot the other day. Double down in the gap yesterday, double earlier, a little flare to left field. But getting behind in the account, I think he was looking for something away, breaking ball, and was able to take that into the gap just out of the reach of the third baseman, Sobieza. And here comes the skipper, Elvis Dominguez, and he'll go to the bullpen. There's a couple of lefties warming up. Looks like Nick Hainline wearing number 17, jogging out. This is the big southpaw, 6'3", 205 pounds, hits the infield dirt. That'll do it for the starter, Jack Stolano. Bounced after two innings plus. Doesn't get very deep into this one. We'll let Hainline come in, get his warm-ups, and he'll be back with the resumption here at the bottom of the third. Schmidt on second, Higgins on first. First batter that Hainline will face off against, Austin Krizik, in a one nothing game. Back after the pitching change next.
Big lefty Nick Hainline takes over on the mound after two plus innings from Jax Delano. Leaves the game with Schmidt on second, Higgins on first. The responsibility of the starter if they were to score. Austin Krizik will welcome Hainline to the game. Six foot three, Peoria, Illinois native. Transfer from Illinois Central College. True sophomore deals to the veteran Austin Krizik and gets ahead on a fastball at the knees called for a strike. Krizik hit by a pitch from Stolano the last at bat. That was back in the first inning. Krizik stranded on. As the Rebels score, but were unable to capitalize on a lot of base runners in the opening frame. Hainline into a jam early. Gets a pop-up. Sliced towards the right field side. Tyrese Johnson towards the line. Right fielder's underneath it. He's got it. Either runner tagging up. Not able to advance as the strong cutoff throw goes to the shortstop, Taylor. So Krizik just looked like he got his hands underneath that one. Kept the hands inside, but a really, really steep attack angle there. Yeah, he uh, I would venture to guess he wants that one back. He swung at uh, a ball there. Wasn't able to get his hands extended to your point. There's another situation in the last inning. Runner on second base, no outs. First and second, no outs. Rebels got to capitalize, not leave any more runners on base. Brandon O'Sullivan will try to crack this one open. Nearly jumped out of his shoes as he fouls this pitch back into the mitt of the catcher, Hosey. You can see the eyes light up for O'Sullivan there. Six foot junior, spent two years at San Joaquin Delta. Runner breaks for third. It's a curveball call for a ball high in the throw late and nearly into left field. Sobieschik had to come way off the base and leap to make a grab. Schmidt swipes third, his fourth steal of the year. Fantastic break right there. I think he was timing up. Hainline, first couple pitches, got a great break, was able to slide in on a high throw from the catcher, Hoagie. One thing is that keeps with the runner not advancing from first, Higgins does keep the double play in situation for the Braves. You know, fire over to first. Higgins back in standing and safely. Runners in the corners. One down on a one nothing game. O'Sullivan with an RBI on a walk earlier. This pitch pulled foul. Chopped on the third base side as the count goes one and two. O'Sullivan and last year at San Joaquin Delta College went 344 in terms of the batting average, eight home runs, 50 RBIs in 48 games. This guy a ribby machine. Got a combined 72 RBIs in 90 games in his two years at the JUCO level. Gets a piece here, fouls it back, stays alive on one and two. And for a guy like O'Sullivan, coming in behind Paul Myro, a, a returner, You've got to take advantage of the opportunities when they're presented. Oh, absolutely. Myro's struggling a little bit at the plate, playing great D for the Hustle and the Rebs, but taking advantage of your chances. This pitch popped up to left field. We'll see if it's deep enough. Here comes the center fielder Vogel to make the catch. Tagging at third is Schmidt. He's going to go. A strong strike to the plate. Takes a short hop. It is not in time. It bounced out of the glove of the catcher, Hosey. Sacrifice fly to right field for O'Sullivan. Gives him his second RBI of the day. His third RBI of the year, and it gives the Rebels a two to nothing lead. That one not deep at all. An aggressive approach there from Schmidt. Yeah, that's the the speed, right? He's getting the verbal signal from Coach Higgins at third base. Vogel made a really strong throw. Hoagie just wasn't able to come up with that. I think the throw actually beat him to the plate. Just not able to feel that in time. So Schmidt scores. Higgins, meanwhile, staying at first base. Shows you how shallow that one was. Santino Pinaro trying to extend the lead again. Higgins breaks the throw to first base, and they got him rung up. A 1-3-6 put off to end the inning as Higgins makes it out on the base pass, but the Rebels do strike for another run. Parker Schmidt scores his second run of the game after walking, being advanced to second on a single, stealing third, and scoring on a sacrifice. Through three innings full, UNLV leads Bradley 2-0.
Sam Simon pitching with a 2 to nothing lead. The Rebels on top of the Braves. Top of the fourth inning begins with the heart of the Bradley lineup. Timmy O'Brien, the first baseman in the three-hole. Takes a called ball up. Simon pitching with a little bit more run support. As Parker Schmidt scored on a Brendan O'Sullivan sacrifice fly. Schmidt's got both runs scored today. The, the score, Parker Schmidt, two. Bradley, <laughs> nothing. As Simon misses outside, 2-0 to O'Brien, who struck out to end the first. I think if you ask Coach Stolte at this point, though, he'd be disappointed when only have two on the board. Big swing and a miss from O'Brien. That's a 2-0 hack if I ever saw one. Sitting dead right on the fastball. Instead got the changeup. Schmidt now with six runs scored on the year, tying him with Krizik and Higgins for the team lead. Middle part of the lineup scoring runs. Always good. It's a line drive, base hit, poked to right field. Sends Higgins towards the gap. He's got it on two hops and fires it in. O'Brien with a base hit. The third of the game for Bradley. O'Brien's seventh hit in 20 at bats on the year. Logan Delgado. Simon just left that up a little bit. Good piece of hitting, though. Get the hands inside the baseball. Got good wood on it. I guess good composite metal in our case here. <laughs> Runner on first with Logan Delgado working his way into the left-hand box. He swings to the first pitch and fouls it back. So we're starting to tee up on that fastball. O'Brien, by the way, becomes the second straight leadoff batter to reach an inning after Simon had set down the first two in order. Rebel pitchers this weekend have done a really good job, though, of Bradley getting their leadoff guys on, getting out of the innings. Ground ball to second. Picked up by Heff. The feet of the bag is in time. So Sullivan's throw to first. May have beaten the runner, but it's off the glove of Austin Krizik, trickling behind him on the first base side. So a fielder's choice for Delgado. Four to six, the put out of O'Brien at second base. A really strong throw there by O'Sullivan. It was. It, it, to start that off, Heft made a really good play deep in the hole there. Able to flip his feet real quick, relay over. O'Sullivan, really strong throw. I'm not sure they would have had him, but good looking play by the Rebels. A softly hit ground ball, wiped out a real tailor made double play chance. As the first pitch, grounded foul by Sobieszczyk and off the hands of the third base coach. We continuously talk about third yeah. base coaches. I'm not sure I would have put my hand out for that one. That's the one you just get out of the way. Or pretend like you don't see it. Cool as a cucumber over there. I can see you with the helmet on down there. <laughs> Nicely spotted 0-1 <laughs> fastball in for strike two. At this point in my career, I need a face mask also. <laughs> Looking like a, uh, a softball pitcher, right? We'll get you one of the, uh, one of the lacrosse helmets. A little bit more functioning. Football. Pretty, pretty comfortable up here. And it hits him. So Biescic hit on the arm. Reaching for the second time today without the benefit of a hit. Hit a ground ball to Gunnar Meyer with third. That was misplayed in the second. Reaches here in the fourth on a hit batter. Moving Delgado up to second. Two on, one down. Rebels lead it two to nothing. Bo Durbin due up next. He's one for one thus far. Yeah, Sammy let that one get away from him. Tell by body language, he's pretty disappointed in himself. First hit batter of the year for Sam Simon. First pitch to Durbin, bounced in the dirt. Simon hit three batters last year, two the year before. But expecting to see a ton more innings and a lot of work this year. Fastball just below the kneecaps, moves it 2-0 to Durbin. And Simon in 2022, 13 outings, just the one start. He threw 22 innings. He threw 26 and two-thirds last year. Over 14 outings. Pitching in his 11th inning of work already this year. This next one low as well on the count. 3-0. and His first three ball no strike count of the afternoon. Yeah, he's going to need to battle back right here. I'm expecting fastball, but you're also expecting Durbin to keep the bat on his shoulder. Watching all the way on 3-0. and Durbin takes a strike. Also got bailed out just now by calling it this afternoon. It is 12-01 here on the West Coast. Officially into the afternoon on a Sunday. Big swing and a miss on a curveball. Yeah. And the count goes full. Simon trying to come all the way back. I think Durbin was thinking fastball again. Got way out in front of that. But uh, good pitch with that new pitch that Simon has. On 3-2, he gets a swing and a miss on a pitch in the dirt for strike three. You want to talk about coming all the way back for an important out. Simon with his fourth strikeout of the day. They've all been swinging Ks as well. Now and that's one of those ones that pitching coaches can say, you got to help yourself out. You know, get behind in the count. A little shaky. 
top of the fourth here for Simon, but he's battling back. Two on, two down as Cole Lucky takes high. Lucky with the long hair flowing out of the back of the red helmet. Popped out to Heft in shallow right field to end the threat in the second inning. Swings and misses here. Count goes even at one. Delgado off second. Sobies check off first. The fielder's choice and a hit batter put him there. Infield's deep, outfield deep, and straight up as well. Ground ball left side. Glove by Myro on the slide. Third baseman's up, sets the feet, and fires to first in time. What a play by the freshman Gunnar Myro to retire the side and strand a pair of runners on in the Bradley half of the fourth. Santino Panaro leads things off in the bottom of the inning. UNLV looking to extend their two to nothing lead. You're watching UNLV Baseball, presented by Intermountain Health, official health partner of UNLV Athletics, here to be a part of your Las Vegas life, and more importantly, here to help you live an even healthier one. Along with Dan Dolby, I'm Matt Neverett from Earl E. Wilson Stadium. Rebels looking for a clean and easy three-game sweep of the Bradley Braves, going for win number six in a row after dropping the opening game of the season at Pacific last weekend. After a stellar sliding defensive stop by Gunnar Myro into the top of the fourth, it'll be... Santino Panaro squaring to bunt to lead off the bottom of the inning and pulling it back. A couple of Bishop Gorman Gales here in the middle innings. You talked about Rebels winning the last five. They stand atop the standings overall, non-conference not included because we haven't started yet, at five and one. Santino takes a strike. And the count quickly, nothing and two against third year outfielder Santino Panaro. Played a lot of different roles. He's played left, he's played right, a little bit of center even. Done a ton of DHing like he's doing this afternoon. 0 for 1 thus far. As this pitch goes over his head, nearly got the end of the bat, but it goes to the backstop for a ball. That's one where every coach will tell you, hey, get that bat down. Yeah, keep it down. Because the best case, if it hits your bat there, it's a foul ball and it dribbles away. Worst case, I've seen it happen. Guys will do that. It goes into fair territory as if it were a bunt. Correct. Maybe as easy an out as you can get for the other side. Nick Hainline on one and two, spins a slider off the outside. You'll see a lot of guys just, they know the pitch is going over their head, they just kind of bend their knees and fall down, but the bat stays over their head. Count even at two to Panaro. With Bailey Seeger on deck, Gunnar Myro hitting third. Santino fouls the pitch straight down, able to stay alive. That elevated fastball, he was ready to go, ready to jump on it. Yeah, we're looking for some Strong contact here from Panaro. He's last few at bats, he's kind of rolling over the pitch, out on his front foot a little bit too much. Get that weight back, get those hands through. Wind blowing softly to left as Hainline delivers, and a slider breaking way off the outside brings the count full. Panaro just three of fifth, make it two of 15 to start the year. Both Panaro and Pimentel slow with the bat, at least to get it started in that left field spot going back and forth. Parker Schmidt out there today. Bonaro takes strike three, called. He can't believe it. That ball sure looked off the plate from our vantage point. Low release from Hayline, almost a three-quarter arm slot, makes it look like it's coming in from right center field. Yeah, Bonaro disagreed for sure. He had already tossed the bat. It goes as the second strike out of the day for Rebel Batteries. The starter, Stellato, ended with two, or rather one. 
his final line in a moment. As Seeger takes a strike. Seeger with a base hit in the second. Led that ending off with a single and was stranded on third. Three batters following him. All recorded putouts. That's on right matchup here in the fourth. Here's the 01. 70 mile an hour breaking ball through the top of the zone for a strike quickly. No balls and two strikes that count to Seeger. We're getting some information from our pitch com. Trevor Kennedy helping us out. That pitch missed by four and a half inches on Panaro. No wonder he was upset. That's cold hard data right there. As Seeger tried to check the swing, got a piece of it on the way by regardless. That'll go as a swinging strikeout. Back to back K's. And the Rebels, for the first time at least so far, scored a couple of strikeouts in the same inning. Here's Gunnar Myro trying to get something going for the Rebels. Two outs, nobody on. Fantastic play, top of the inning here to get the Rebels out of a jam. Diving stab to his left and a strong strike to Krizik at first. Chain jump, tumbles through the top of the zone for a strike. Hainline's really settled in here. Comes in after Jack Stilato went two innings plus. He is charged with the two runs on three hits, three walks and a hit batter. He struck out one over 53 pitches. He is the pitcher of record for Bradley. Myro swings through a fastball, gets a piece of it, knocks it back into the mitt of Hosey who squeezes it. And the freshman in the nine hole falls behind nothing and two with Charles on deck. He got behind in his first at bat too and watched strike three. Let's see if he's a little more aggressive. Main line from the stretch, bounces one in. The old 56-footer, mm -hmm. easy take for Myro. Gunnar Myro with three really solid years of high school stats. I mentioned he committed after the sophomore year. How about a 477 batting average and 60 plate appearances as a sophomore in high school? Yeah, that's uh, probably the main reason that Coach Dolte and the staff were so excited about getting him here. Got on, base at a, got on base at a 600 clip that year. It's a chopper right to the second baseman, Durbin, who takes two steps to the right. Gloves and fires to first in time. And first one, two, three innings spun up by Bradley today. Zeroes across for UNLV in the fourth. And we're on to the fifth. It's the Rebels two, the Braves nothing. Sam Simon back out for a fifth inning of work. He's got a 2-0 lead. He went seven in his season debut a week ago today. Seven shutout frames. He's not allowed to run yet today on just three hits. He struck out four and has issued just the one walk. Facing off against the catcher, Nick Hosey, who swings at the first pitch, hits it in the air to left center field. Here comes Ryland Charles as the center fielder on his horse makes the catch. One pitch, one out. So far, so good for Simon here in the fifth. As we look ahead to the schedule for the Hustlin' Rebels, we'll be on the road Tuesday at Utah Tech for a midweek, then come home and we're gonna actually start conference play a week earlier than normal, given the fact that there's an odd number of teams kind of worked out in our schedule this year. Left-handed batting, Ryan Taylor takes a ball. Yeah, it's a, that's a heck of a start too. San Jose State picked preseason to finish first in the 17 Mountain West. And they've have gotten off to a slow start. They finally got their first win last night. Simon steals a strike over the outside. Taylor, by the way, doubled in the third. It's the only extra base hit for Bradley. Their first extra base hit since the seventh yesterday. Takes that pitch off the outside, moves ahead two and one. 
You know, if he then takes on BYU Tuesday, March the 5th, that game will be on the Mountain West Network. That'll be a really fun midweek non-conference matchup. A little Mountain West rivalry. This 2-1 pitch dribbled down the third base side, touched up by Seeger and foul ground. BYU baseball has really started to rise. They've always had good athletic programs there, obviously football. And moving to the Big 12, basketball team is really good this year, but baseball, they're, they're expected to compete for a conference championship this year. Are, are they still in the whack for, for baseball? They are in Big 12 this so year. So they move for everything. Correct. They've got, if you have never seen the view from their oh, baseball stadium amazing. in Provo, it's worth Googling. It's a line drive lashed out to left field. Taylor sends Schmidt back, and on the move, the left fielder makes the catch over the shoulder. He made that look easy, but I can tell you that was anything but plenty of spin as well going towards the line off the bat of a lefty. Schmidt up to the task, and Simon two up and two away. He's retired four straight since hitting Sobieszczyk in the last inning. He was getting through this inning on a minimum amount of pitches also, so keeping that pitch count down, which could extend his innings. Leadoff man Ryan Vogel, the speedy center fielder who takes a called ball low. Vogel's 0 for 2, and in fact, led the series off of the base hit. Hasn't had a hit yet. He hits this one in the air, deep to right center field. Higgins on the track, right fielder in front of the fence makes the catch. All three outfielders record a put out in the fifth. Charles, then Schmidt, then Higgins to end the inning, and Simon goes 1-2-3 for the second time this afternoon. With that, we've played half a ball game, four and a half down, four and a half innings to go. UNLV due up next, leading two to nothing. Top of the lineup, due up for UNLV in the bottom of the fifth inning. Officially in the second half of today's action, the Rebels going for a three-game sweep against the visiting Bradley Braves out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Nick Hainline back in for a third inning of work against Ryland Charles. Left on left matchup starts out 1-0 as Hainline, who came in with two on, nobody out in the third, has retired all five batters he's faced since then. Gave up a run on a sacrifice. The run charged to the starter, Stilato who's the pitcher of record. Charles hammers this one deep to right field. Johnson to the track, to the wall. It's out of here. Into the trees, Ryland Charles with a blast. His second of the year, and the Rebels extend the lead to three to nothing. Oh, baby, what a poke from Ryland. That one got up there. They hit it over the 375 mark, right above the Star Nursery outfield wall there. I've got halfway up the pine tree, so we're going to have to get some details on that one, but I would imagine that's pretty close to 400 feet right there. Oh, I'll give that one 400 feet just based off the eye test. That thing was a shot, a line drive that just kept carrying. And Charles, now with two home runs, four RBIs on the year. Their base is for J.P. Heft following the leadoff bomb as the right-handed batting second baseman takes a slider for a strike. Yeah, I'll say... 408. That's going to be my guess. I'll take the under on that we'll, one. We'll, we'll get the numbers here in a moment. Trevor Kennedy working furiously as Heff takes a changeup for a strike. 
That's one pitch that Hainline has had working with a ton of movement, especially to righties. You don't often see the lefty throw a changeup into a righty, that front door breaker. Correct. It's not, the velocity is down on it, but it's got a lot of movement. There's a slider 0-2. Heft lifts it to right. Just a couple of steps towards center for Johnson as the right fielder stops and makes the catch over the left shoulder. Nice Lead off bomb, followed by a fly out to right. Heft drops to 0 for 3. He's now 3 of 10 on the week. And 9 of 26 on the year. Here's Parker Schmidt, who has done a lot of run scoring this year. Prior to that, Charles Baum had scored the only two runs for UNLV in the game. He's generated runs. Very much so. It's this one on the line to right center, moving over is Vogel. Center fielder dives, it's off his glove. Takes a bounce past Tyrese Johnson. That'll allow Schmidt at least second. He rounds the bag, heads to third. He's in there standing up on a one-out triple. Just outstanding piece of inside-out hitting right there from Schmidt. That ball carried farther than I thought it was off the bat. Vogel made a heck of an effort in the outfield, got off his feet, dove, tipped the ball, which went to the wall, and then Johnson had a little had to readjust as he was coming over and off the carom off the wall. But Parker Schmidt easily into third base with a stand-up triple. This, this guy, like we talked about, he's generating offense for the Rebels. He had walked twice prior. That's his first triple of the year. He's on third for Kate Higgins. 98, the exit velo there. He poked it. Higgins takes a slider. That one's in for a strike. All right, we got the numbers in the Charles Blast. I was off. Very much so. 383 feet. Still a bomb. Yeah. But the exit velo, what I'm looking at, 103 off the bat of Ryland Charles. Higgins fouls one back. Count nothing in two. He is two for two on the day. Yeah, we talked about it in yesterday's broadcast. How Charles really chokes up on the bat. So sometimes you're, you're kind of wondering, how are you generating that bat speed being choked up three inches off the knob? But uh, it works for him. He's so good at those pitches high and in on the chest as well. Higgins takes a high and in pitch and twists it the other way, but a foul ball into the bleacher seats on the third base side keeps it nothing in two. Nobody throwing in the Bradley bullpen, although there's a couple of Braves moving around. See, not one, but two bullpen catchers. We've seen him go double barrel a couple different times this weekend. Higgins trying to claw back from 0-2. Hainline delivers. Fastball off the outside. A purpose pitch for sure on nothing and two. Higgins, a better watch. Very surprised he threw the fastball there. That's, uh, that's Higgins' go-to swing on that fastball. I can't imagine he's going to get another one here. This should be a big breaker. First baseman even with the bag. Everybody else deep and straight up in the infield. Curveball. Poked out of plate on the left field line. Higgins just trying to stay alive. I think he's going to be pretty disciplined up there. Doesn't really like something. He's just going to get his bat out there, try to foul it off, find something he really likes in the zone. Well, the fact that he's able to take that pitch and go down the third base side means he is keeping his hands inside the ball, if nothing else. He's behind one and two. Hainline line. There was a slider over the outside for a strike. That's punch out number three for the left-handed reliever. That they've been calling that spot. Yep, that's the Paul same Sacedo spot has, that, yeah. that Panaro had. Got rung up on, we'll have to see how far that was off the plate, if, if it was. But from our vantage, it looks like that is uh, a couple inches off the plate, away from the left-handed hitting Kate Higgins. As Austin Krizik stands in 0 for 1. I, I guess all you can ask is consistency, which it has been. True. Yeah, we have seen that today as Krizik takes low. He seems to be extending the strike box horizontally, not getting the low pitch. And different umps have their different zones. Yeah. It shouldn't be subjective, but it is sometimes. <laughs> as Krizik takes a breaking ball through the top of the zone, Kack goes even at one. Well, to your point, though, as long as it's consistent throughout mm -hmm. the game, because you'll see batters as they leave the box, they're talking to the on-deck hitter on you know what, he, what they're seeing. So consistency really helps. Krizik. It's a ground ball to third, picked up by Sobieschik. The freshman fires across the diamond in time for out number three. A couple of extra base hits, including a Ryland Charles leadoff home run in the bottom of the fifth, have extended the Rebel lead. One run, two hits, nowhere is in a man left on. Through five full, it's the Rebels on top of the Braves, three to nothing.
UNLV Baseball is presented by Desert Radiology, the premier radiology practice in Nevada, providing the highest quality of diagnostic and interventional imaging for over 50 years. Radiology provider and partner of the Valley Health System Hospitals, UMC, and Southwest Medical Associates. They're the trusted community partner for the Vegas Golden Knights, the Aces, the Lights, the Aviators, and an official partner of UNLV Athletics, 11 convenient full-service imaging facilities in Las Vegas, Henderson, or Pahrump. We're in paradise on the campus of UNLV. And the homestanding Hustlin' Rebels lead the Bradley Braves three to nothing. Sam Simon trying to get through a sixth inning of work. Two, three, four batters for Bradley do up against him. Tyrese Johnson, Timmy O'Brien, Logan Delgado as first pitch swinging. Tyrese Johnson hits one to center. I think Ryland Charles took two steps backwards before stopping and making the catch at the chest. A line out moves Johnson over three. He had flied out to right and struck out swinging against Simon Pryor. Simon with four strikeouts through now five and a third innings, one of them coming against Timmy O'Brien, who stands in now. Simon's first out outing went seven innings, but he's keeping his pitch count down. Came into this inning 67 pitches, so very manageable. Charles, or rather Simon, throws high. I was looking at Ryland Charles because that NV Energy home run of the game was a leadoff blast, the second of the year for Ryland, his first since opening day. Chest high heater for Simon. Evens the count at one. O'Brien struck out against Sammy in the first, ending that one, two, three frame. Singled against him to start the second. In the fourth, beg your pardon. It's a ground ball off the foot, a foul ball. One ball, two strikes the count. So Sam Simon, seven shutout innings in his opening outing against Pacific a week ago. Four strikeouts, two walks in that game. So far, five and a third scoreless. He's given up just three base hits and one walk while striking out four. Infield's deep, have to step towards the bag at second. Simon spots a fastball just off the outside. Bailey Seeger thought it was strike three behind the plate. So did Simon. And instead the count goes even at deuces. Three nothing to lead, top of the sixth inning. One out, nobody on. Here's the two two. Line drive foul and out of plate on the right field line. So just looking ahead to Tuesday, Dan, the Rebels head to St. George, Utah to take on Utah Tech. Jordan Hansen going to throw at some point in the game, likely in a starting role, and at least so far, bullpen position to be wide open. There, they can do whatever they want. And Simon throws a fastball high. Count goes full at three and two. Logan Delgado waiting on deck. This will be uh, Hansen's if they stay to the schedule. It'll be his first start really, you know, over a year after having a little minor surgery. Foul ball knocked straight back, keeps the count full. And uh, in talking to. Coach Vanderhoek, he will be on some type of pitch count. So I imagine we're going to almost see a bullpen day. But uh, excited to see what Hanson, because I mean, his fastball, he's 94-95. The 3-2 in there, called for strike three. Simon dots a heater. His fifth strikeout of the game is his first taken for strike three. And that's quickly two up and two away here in the sixth. I think it's seven straight batters retired since he hit Sobieschik with the pitch. Sobieschik on deck is Logan Delgado, the cleanup hitter, doing the DHing, stands in from the left. Simon working well, working out of the stretch here with nobody on. It's a 3 0 lead. He gets ahead, nothing and one. As he dots the lower part of the zone with a fastball for a strike, Delgado struck out to start the second, tapped into a fielder's choice in the fourth inning, did a soft grounder to Heft. It's a hard grounder right back up the middle. Nearly took out the ankles of Sam Simon. And the roller into center field is Delgado's first hit of the day. Just the fourth hit for Bradley in the game. They had three hits in the 4-1 loss yesterday. They just now go over that total here this afternoon. Two out base runner on for Isaac Sobieschik. Hitless 0 for 1. That one was hot and better off not sticking your leg out there. The other night we saw Kate take one off the shin and after the game he had a baseball lump on the front of his shin. You don't want to see that as a pitching coach. First pitch outside at number 45, Isaac Sobieschik. It had been Jackson Chatterton at third base in each of the first two games. Chatterton 0 for 4 before going 0 for 3 yesterday. Big swing and a miss by his replacement evens the count at 1. That's a pitch right there that if he masters because that changeup right there, that, that's nasty. That's got some drop on it. It's a tough pitch to catch up with. Grounder to short. 
Fielded by O'Sullivan, and he'll go the short way. J.P. Heff standing on the bag, a fielder's choice, 6-4 to four on the putout. Retires the side after four batters in the top of the six. For Bradley, no runs on a hit, no errors, and a man left on. Brendan O'Sullivan himself leads things off in the bottom of the six. UNLV on top of Bradley, 3 to nothing. Shortstop, number nine, Entering into the bottom of the sixth, Ashland Rebels on top of the Braves, three to nothing, and a new arm atop the mound for the visitors. Six foot tall lefty, red shirt freshman Luke Trepanier. Third lefty in a row rolled out there by Elvis Dominguez and the Bradley Braves. He'll face off against right handed batting shortstop Brendan O'Sullivan to lead off the inning. Trepanier making his collegiate debut, misses high on his first pitch. O'Sullivan without an official at bat thus far. Drove in a run on a walk in the first, drove in a run on a sacrifice fly in the third inning. Two RBIs without an AB. He takes high as the Illinois native Trepanier falls behind 2-0 again. A red shirt freshman was with the team last year but did not pitch and this is his first outing of the year. We'll see how juiced up he is in his collegiate debut against O'Sullivan. Junior college transfer who takes low. Got the count, three balls, no strikes. And regardless of what happens in this at bat, if I'm a rebel here at the bottom of the lineup in this stage of the game, I'm taking a strike at the very least. Oh, absolutely. Make Trepanier come to you. Lefty out of the stretch delivers. 3-0 fastball called for a strike. That one clipping the black of the outside. Throwing about 89 on the fastball. Yeah, pretty good for a guy who's not overly sized. Six feet tall, 185 pounds. You can certainly add to that lower half as well. 3-1 offering. Crushed. Deep in the air to left field. Lucky going back. Left fielder runs out of room, and this one's out of here. Kiss it goodbye. Brendan O'Sullivan with his first bomb in a UNLV uniform, and that'll extend the lead. Four to nothing the score. It's his third plate appearance in a row with the run batted in. You're exactly right. He was able to get his hands extended through the zone, which Pan, you're throwing all fastballs for the most part. He's able to jump on that one, went over the about the 370 mark right over the new Evan Williams bourbon sponsorship sign out there. You gotta take advantage of that sponsorship. As O'Sullivan left the yard at 105 off the bat, absolutely hammered that line drive. As Trepanier comes back with a strike to Santino Panaro. Welcome to college baseball, Luke Trepanier. Yeah, tough way to start, but uh, right now, he's just throwing a heap of fastballs up there. So let's see if uh, the Rebels can get their timing down here. Naro, 0 for 2. Takes a ball outside, one ball, one strike. I think out of the nine pitches now, we've only seen one off-speed pitch. If that, yeah. O'Sullivan had clubbed 10 home runs in two years of junior college. 
It's his first at the D1 level. Panaro looking for his first home run of the year. Leans away from a pitch that nearly hits him inside. That was a breaking ball. There we go. Panaro with his first two collegiate home runs last year. Came after. He was phenomenal. I mean, just tremendous in his freshman year, but didn't hit a home run. Not really his game. Can run into one every now and then. He takes high, and the count goes 3-1. and one. This is the kind of count he could take advantage of. Oh, absolutely. This is a hitter's count, and you got to be thinking, Trepanier's probably coming back with the fastball again. Panaro batted 346 two years ago, just 282 last year. There it is. High and tight, called for strike two. Panaro called out on strikes to lead off the fourth in his last plate appearance. He's in a three-ball, two-strike count here. Nobody out, nobody on. Second straight inning featuring a leadoff home run for UNLV. Extending the lead to four to nothing. Seeger on deck. Here's the three-two to Panaro. Fought off on the ground on the third base side past Kevin Higgins. The fastball just probably caught the inside part of the zone there. Right off the hands of Panaro. He's able to fight that one off, stay alive. I'd like to see him get his hands extended just a little bit. Rolled over a few times. Luke Trepanier set in his collegiate debut. The 3 2 pitch. Down low. That's ball four. Panaro now does get to take that walk to first base that he so badly wanted in his last plate appearance. Second straight AB with a 3 2 count. That'll bring out the pitching coach, Andrew Werner, as well. He'll call the entirety of the infield in. Again, 4 0 the lead after an O'Sullivan leadoff home run. Santino Panaro takes a walk on a full count pitch. Talked about some activity. Rebels at top of the Mountain West Conference, all non-conference games thus far, five and one. There's a couple scores from the Mountain West. Air Force sweeps the series against Navy. They end up winning four to two. Air Force has a really good lineup. Oh yeah. Cola Singham, their first baseman. All America candidate. All American candidate. Um, Top of the second, no score, Nevada at San Francisco. Top of the second, also Seattle takes a one nothing lead against San Jose. Talked about their struggles thus far. San Jose looking to get something going at home. Later on, one o'clock start, Fresno State at Cal, Cal State Fullerton. And later tonight, late one, Utah at San Diego State. 6 p.m. on a Sunday, you don't see a lot of those. No, that's another uh, former Mountain West battle. Talking about UNLV and BYU coming up in a week. After the mound visit, for the first pitch to Seeger, Trepanier lifts the leg and fires to first base. Panaro back in at first and safely on the dive. Hasn't attempted a stolen base yet on the year. Panaro with two stolen bases in each of his first two seasons, four total as a Rebel. Seeger thought about it, held up on a pitch called for a strike. Nice location. Trepanier must be wearing number 12. Probably Trepanier's best pitch thus far. Absolutely, at least that we've seen. A couple of arms in the bullpen, including a right-hander. Believe it or not, there is a right-hander warming up. Been three straight lefties today for Bradley. Seeger takes low. The issue is, one of them, wearing number 32, Anthony Pothoff. The big problem, they got a number 40 warming up. No, no, there's no number 40 on the roster, so we'll hope he doesn't come in. We'll figure it out. That's what you do this time of year. The 1-1, Seeger crushes this one deep to left field again. Lucky back at the fence. He leaps up, and this one's gone. A two-run jack for Bailey Seeger is first with UNLV. The home run parade continues. It's now a 6 to nothing game in the sixth inning. We definitely have a power surge going on here as the NV Energy home run graphic comes up on the scoreboard. Seeger just did a really good job of keeping that weight back transfer with the hands coming through really quick. We'll see what the exit velocity on that one, but that one was well struck. I think that was interesting. I was watching Seeger around first base. He was not watching the ball. He actually thought that might have been caught and kind of slowed down, looked over at third base coach Kevin Higgins, and he's like, go, you got it. You're good, bud. <laughs> Gunnar Myro looks to continue the power parade as he fouls the first pitch down the third base side on the ground. So both O'Sullivan and Seeger with their first home runs with the team. For Seeger in his fifth year of college baseball, that's just his eighth home run career. Well, he's making the most of his opportunity like we talked about early. Count now one and one as the 
First pitch fouled off. Second one rolls back underneath the leg of the catcher. One ball and one strike. The count to Gunnar Myro. 0 for 2 thus far. 1 for 4 on the season. Struck out looking in the second. Grounded out to second to end the 1-2-3 fourth inning. Nobody on, nobody out. Two home runs already in the inning as Myro taps this one straight down. A foul ball as it trickles out to the pitcher, Luke Trepanier, who's given up two hits and a walk. Both of those hits have left the yard. You know, we talked about how well the pitching staff is working for the Rebels, but this Rebel batting order is going to continuously put up runs for the support of those sta that staff. And you combine them both, you got a winning combination. Trepanier way outside in the count even at two. Well, looking at the, the metrics from that Seeger home run, traveled 356 feet. The reason he didn't immediately know it was out is because he hit it on a 30-degree on launch angle. <laughs> okay. That thing way up yeah, there. But no wind. That's clearing the yeah. fence. A 2-2 change outside, and Trepanier has worked the count full against Myro. Ryland Charles, who homered against Nick Hainline on deck. Hainline finishes, allowing one run on two. It's over three innings. No walks, three strikeouts on 36 pitches. Myro takes up for ball four. That is a veteran at bat from a true freshman player. Yeah, we see a little conversation going on in the dugout. We are going to get a head coach Elvis Dominguez to come out and make a change. Yeah, that'll do it for Luke Trepanier in his college debut. And who else is coming in but number 40? <laughs> we'll figure out just who's coming into the game. Trepanier goes home run walk, home run walk. He is lifted. The Rebels lead it six to nothing. Ryland Charles welcomes a new pitcher to the game. We'll step aside for the pitching change. Easton Harris on the mound for the Bradley Braves. He had played shortstop in each of the first two games. Changed the jersey to pitch and wore number nine throughout the week. Now donning the number 40. So Easton Harris. This is high to Ryland Charles. Harris making his second pitching appearance of the year. Again, wearing number nine previous two days. Sometimes with the alternate jerseys, you'll see a, a number switch. Not communicated ahead of time, though, as he attempts a pick off. Gunnar Myro back in head first and safely after he walked. So it is Easton Harris pitching behind Luke Trepanier. What a way to make your collegiate debut if you're Trepanier. Home run walk, home run walk, and you're bounced. Harris, who mostly plays shortstop, misses high. And the count goes even at one. Now, earlier we were talking about BYU and the Big 12 now. You think about the old days, the Mountain West with BYU, Utah, TCU. It was one heck of a conference. Charles fouls one off down the left field side. 
And yet somehow the basketball profile right now, the best that it's ever been, even without those schools. Absolutely. Like we talked about earlier, Rebels only being a game out of first place. There's actually seven teams within two games of first place in the Mountain West. Big shocker yesterday was New Mexico losing at home at the pit to Air Force. Oh, yeah. Charles swings and misses at a breaking ball. He's set down on strikes for out number one. But it turns out all they need to do is get Easton Harris to sit, change his number, come in after a big inning, and that's how they get the first out of the sixth. The fifth strikeout for a Rebel batter today. Trepanier didn't strike out anybody. Main line had three, Stolano had one. The starter who is the pitcher of record. Here's J.P. Heft with Myro on first, six to nothing. The Rebels lead it in the bottom of inning number six. First pitch, curveball, down and inside. Harris missing for ball one to Heft, who's hitless today. Three for ten this week, including a base hit, a pair of base hits, I should say, yesterday. He was also hit by a pitch. Another throw to first. Myro back in safely. They're keeping a close eye on him. You know, with a six-run lead here for the Hustlin' Rebels, it'll be interesting to see what Sam Simon, after this long break here in the lower half of the inning for the Rebels, putting the monster runs up, what they do. Runner goes, a breaking ball in there for a strike. The throw bounces, and the tag not in time by the shortstop Taylor. So Myro steals his first base of his college career. That's the first non-Parker Schmidt steal of the year for the Rebels. Love the aggressiveness, and that's the thing you're going to see from the Hustlin' Rebels. No matter the score, time of the game, you're going to see some aggressiveness on the base, pa base paths. Well, up 6 nothing. They want that extra point. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Heft takes a ball outside. Good location, especially in a right-on-right -right matchup, but a better take by Heft, who spent his freshman year at UC San Diego, didn't play, and then transferred to Saddleback College, where he was excellent for two years. Talked to Kevin Higgins about him before the year. He said, this was the guy we recruited to be our starting second baseman this year. He goes the other way. It's one down the right field side. Over to the line is Tyrese Johnson. He makes the catch. Meanwhile, tagging up from second and advancing to third as the throw is cut off is Gunner Myro. So an advancing fly out. Here's the second straight pop out to right for Heft. He drops to 0 for 4, but does the job moving the runner up 90 feet. And here's Parker Schmidt. One for one with a triple, a pair of walks. Two runs scored and a stolen base already today. It's been exciting to watch. Really, really pleased with what uh, he brings to the table for the for the Hustlin' Rebels. Right-handed batter, upping that OBP today. Reached in all three plate appearances as he takes out. Yesterday, Schmidt in the lineup at DH. Started out with a strikeout and a double play that he tapped into. Followed it with a pair of singles, a stolen base, and a run scored. Tail of two halves for him. Also had a pinch hit double in the opening 9-3 win. Takes a big swing, but fouls this pitch off straight back. The catcher, Nick Hosey, loses the mask, but watches it go into the seats. You know, going back to Sam Simon coming out for top of the seventh, it'll be interesting. He's at 81 pitches right now, and the Rebels have not gone to the bullpen much this weekend and even last weekend. So it's going to be interesting to see what Coach Vanderhoek, as that ball is high, Take the count, two and one. It, it, it'll it be interesting to see what the strategy is here. You, you know, Simon's been sitting around now for about 15 minutes, so not a lot of activity. It looks like somebody's tossing in the Rebel bullpen, but not a lot of activity. That's curveball way outside from Harris, way off balance as well as he nearly fell off the hill. The count goes three and one. We've it, talked about it, though. Two pitches, two pitchers Friday night, two pitches Saturday. Sammy going into... Six complete now. Well, not more you can ask from a Rebel staff. Schmidt on three and one. Pops one up and foul ground on the first base side. Both catcher and first baseman run out of room. And yeah, the foul ball pushes it to three and two with Myro on third. Two down, three runs across in the inning. And the Rebels enjoying a 6 nothing advantage. Nice little Sunday crowd out there. That ball got into the stands, so somebody got a nice little souvenir. $5 margaritas always helps. <laughs> I saw mimosas this morning Ooh. too. I was tempted. That'll be that'll be post game for us. <laughs> the count's full to Schmidt. Harris deals and the foul ball down the first base side keeps the count full. Good defensive swing there by Schmidt. Hey, he brought up the pitching. Cates six innings and a start on Friday. Jesus Gonzalez with the final three for the save. Albert Robles went six and two thirds yesterday in a start. Got the win. Matthew Maloney 
two and a third innings and a save. Myra bouncing off third. Another 3-2. Line to the gap in right center field. That's down. A run will score on an RBI base hit from Parker Schmidt, who rounds first, heads back to the bag. He's two for two. He's now driven in a run, scored two, and triple. Myro scores to make it seven to nothing. Extra points good. That run charged to Luke Trepanier to close his line. He's charged with four of the seven runs. Didn't record an out. Parker Schmidt. Schmidt with his third RBI. He is an absolute machine right now. Putting the ball in play, showing that good things will happen. And also brings up Kate Higgins with two outs. One of the better two out hitters on the West Coast. Curve ball down, ball one to Higgy. He's two for three with a double, a base hit, and a strikeout. So for Luke Trepanier in his college debut, again, didn't record an out, charged for four runs on two hits, both home runs. He also walked a pair. He'll leave with a no decision. Higgins takes outside. Again, for Trepanier, it was an O'Sullivan home run, a Panaro walk, a Seeger home run, a Myro walk. And the inherited runner allowed to score by Easton Harris to make it seven to nothing on the strength of nine hits. Bradley, no runs on four hits. Good size lead for Schmidt off first. As Higgins takes a strike, nodding in agreement as Paul Sacedo signals strike one. Good location. Good job by Hosey, the catcher, to stick it as well in the low outside part of the zone. Grizzix on deck as Higgins stands back in ahead of the 2 1. Easton Harris set and delivering. Curve ball. Grounded to first. Timmy O'Brien's got it in fair ground. He'll take one step back and touch the first base himself. But the Rebels add on in a major way. Scoring four runs on three hits, including home runs by O'Sullivan and Seeger. There were no errors and one runner left on base. The Rebels strike for four through six innings full. They lead it seven to nothing. Hey, hustling, Rebels. On to the seventh we go. A seven-run advantage for UNLV on top of Bradley, seven to nothing, looking to complete the clean sweep of the visitors from the Missouri Valley Conference. First home series of the year has been kind to the Hustlin' Rebels, mostly due to the pitching. As Sam Simon back out for the seventh. His first pitch to Bo Durbin missing low. A defensive substitution. Alex Pimentel takes over in left field. Parker Schmidt, who drove in the seventh run on an RBI. Back in the bottom of the sixth inning, replaced in the left. Simon misses low. Two balls, no strikes to Durbin, who's one for two. There is a possibility that Schmidt might stay in the game of the DH. But it looks like, for now, Pimentel in on a straight switch. As Simon misses low. Three balls, no strikes to count to Durbin, the six hitter, followed by Cole Lucky and Nick Hosey. First three up for Bradley. Simon set and dealing. 3-0 fastball. Call for a strike on the outer third. Tough to get. Parker Schmidt out of the game as hot as he is, but with the seven-run lead right now, getting Pimentel some at-bats I think is really important. Nice location there from Sammy Simon. Knee-high heater for strike two. So from 3-0 to 3-2, Simon trying to come all the way back, something he's done a couple times today. Got five Ks on the day. Make it six. Call for strike three as the fastball freezes Durbin. He had flipped the bat to the dugout. He thought it was ball four. Instead, it's Simon's second strikeout in as many innings. Great location. That pitch has been called a strike all game long. So 
Simon knowing his location and where he can get that call, that, uh, that's a great pitch. Simon had entered this inning at 81 pitches, so it looked to be efficient. As he falls behind Cole Lucky, one ball, no strikes. Slider way off the outside. Lucky, a right-handed batter, has ended each inning in which he's come to bat prior. Lines this one over the head of the third baseman and into the left field corner for extra bases. Lucky reaching for the first time today as he rounds first and stands in at second with a one-out double, the first extra base hit in nearly 10 innings for Bradley, their first extra base knock of the day. For Sam Simon, just the fifth hit that he's allowed. He's spread them out and recorded at least a strikeout in every inning except for one. The one inning he didn't record a strikeout, the one, two, three, fifth. So one out, one on, Nick Hosey. We'll bat from the left in a seven nothing game. Simon working quickly. This is low on the changeup and again, as mentioned, 81 pitches for Sam starting the inning. I don't see anybody warming up with any real intent. Actually, as we look out there, a couple of guys getting to the top of the mound. As Simon they had nothing in one on Hosey. He's over one with the walk. Two and oh. On 2-0, and oh, Hosey checks the swing on a pitch that looked to be near the outside. It'll appeal down to third. Guillermo Rodriguez signals safe. He did not go around. And the count 3-0. and oh. Simon's been inducing a lot of weak contact, and with the number nine man up next, you don't have to bring anything over the zone. He does, though, and it's a called strike right down the chute. Count goes 3-1. and one. Simon gives up the five hits today, but the all-important number is the runs. No earned runs so far in his campaign this year. Throws another fastball for a strike, locating each of those previous two very well after falling behind 3-0. and oh. So he'll look to win this battle. He takes the sign from Seeger, looks to second and delivers. Good Fastball pitch. over the middle for strike three. Second 3-2 strikeout of the inning for Sam Simon, and he's got seven strikeouts on the day. Dealing, getting stronger as he goes. We're going to have to check the numbers. That's probably, I would say, a career high for him. Sam Simon feeling it in the starting role. And that'll bring up Ryan Taylor with two outs. He swings at the first pitch. Simon pulled the string on him. Change up for strike one. Good start there. Threw two fastballs to come back. Last batter, and it starts with the change up. Sam Simon had never struck out more than three in a game before this year. Struck out four in the season opener. He's got seven today and is ahead of Ryan Taylor 0-2 after that swing and miss. Here's the delivery. Strike three swinging. Sam Simon strikes out three in the seventh. He's got eight on the day, and he strands a one-out double on base to get us to the stretch break here at Earl E. Wilson Stadium. UNLV on top, seven to nothing the seventh inning stretch.
coming out of the stretch break in the bottom of the seventh inning. Austin Krizik leading off against Easton Harris. UNLV enjoying a 7 to nothing advantage. On top by a touchdown as Krizik takes a breaking ball for a strike. Harris came in and got all three outs in the sixth. Gave up a run charge to Luke Trepanier on an RBI from Parker Schmidt, who singled through the right side of the infield. Harris misses high to Austin Krizik who is 0 for 2, also hit by a pitch. Speaking of touchdown, I just stepped outside the press box on inning break right there. I see football players actually getting some work in out there today. Pads or no? No pads. Not and yet, and not no, yet. No coaches, just guys out there getting some workouts in, which we start spring training next, or spring ball next Saturday. Seems wow. like we just finished. That calendar flips over so quickly. Well, you, you extend the season like the – Rebs did this last year, and yeah. I know because I was on the road with them <laughs> Christmas. Um, great campaign by Coach Odom and the Rebs, and looking for a good year coming up. I will tell you that uh, something that is pretty unique, and you and I were talking about it earlier, Saturday night, the night of the first day of spring ball, Coach Odom's going to get on a bull. And not just like in a field randomly in someone's yard. No. It's it's at a, a sanctioned event, horns and helmets at the South Point. Yeah, Tough Hedeman comes in here every year bringing his rodeo circuit in. And he, Coach Odom is going to get on a competition bull and try to go at eight seconds. Now, there's a big difference from somebody like me getting on a bull versus somebody from eastern Oklahoma like Barry getting on a bull. He True. at least has seen it, knows a little bit about it. True. I would bet that he has way more boots in his closet than you do. I mean, I've got zero, so if he has one boot, he's got more than I do. Krizik goes the other way to the right center field gap. That's down for a base hit. It goes off the glove of the right fielder, Johnson. Picked up by Vogel and advancing and safely into second is Austin Krizik. A base hit followed by an error from the right fielder, Johnson, accounting for the advancement from first to second. Krizik. Heads up base running for sure. Well, I kid, I kid him all the time. I'm like, you, you're not as fast as you think you are, but he actually motors pretty well. So heads up play, that's what happens when you round the base with your head up, being able to see that misplay in the right field gap right there and able to advance and runner in scoring position with no outs. Brendan O'Sullivan in from the right side. Shortstop takes a called ball one. Meanwhile, emerging in the on-deck circle is Alex Overbay. Looks like he's going to get a pinch hit at bat in the designated hitter role. We'll talk about him a little bit more. As O'Sullivan rips one fair inside the bag at third. That'll score the run as Krizik rounds third and scores easily. Rounding first and heading to second is O'Sullivan. He stands in safely with an RBI double. His fourth run batted in of the day. He has scored a run, or rather driven in a run, in every single plate appearance. It's now 8 to nothing. This is a guy that's just out there taking advantage of the start tonight. Sat on the bench behind Paul Myro for the first two nights of this Bradley series, but gets in there and now is taking advantage of it. He ripped that ball, the ball up in the zone, and he was able to turn on that. We're going to get a pitching change right here. As Easton Harris bounced from the game. Looks like another right-hander jogging out. Hopefully we'll have a number on him. Yeah, it looks like 32. And there is a 32 on the roster, believe it or not. Anthony Pothoff comes out of the bullpen. The right-hander out of Van Meter, Iowa. So Pothoff in for Harris. O'Sullivan bounces him from the game. And Alex Overbay will make his first at bat at Earl E. Wilson when we come back after the pitching change.
Six foot three right-hander wearing number 32, Anthony Pothoff. Out of Van Meter, Iowa heads in for Bradley. Becomes the fifth pitcher used by head coach Elvis Dominguez. Pothoff making his second outing of the season. Pitch last Sunday as well, giving up two hits, no runs in an inning of work. One K, one walk. Replaces Easton Harris on the mound. Brendan O'Sullivan doubling home Austin Krizik. Bouncing Harris from the game. O'Sullivan the responsibility of Harris if he were to score. And here's Alex Overbay, son of 14-year big leaguer Lyle Overbay. Great addition to the program from the Pacific Northwest. Big body in from the right at 6-2 a buck 90. Wouldn't be surprised if both of those may be underestimates. As the big body first baseman serving as the DH in the pinch hit roll takes strike one. Yeah, Overbay primarily a first baseman right now playing behind Krizik. But again, in a game like this, <coughs> Going to get the opportunity to get up there and swing the bat. Big body kid, just like you talked about. Good program. His dad is actually coaching up there, I believe, at Tumwater High School now. Yeah, alma mater of Jordan Hansen, who we talked about. As Potthoff chunks one in the dirt, Wild Pitch will advance O'Sullivan 90 feet from second to third base with an 8 nothing lead. Number, run number 9, 90 feet away. How about the day for O'Sullivan before we get too much more into Overbay? He walked with the bases loaded in the first to drive in a run. Scored Parker Schmidt from third on a sacrifice fly to center in the third. Homeward over the fence and left center to lead off the sixth. And now doubles home Krizik with no outs in the seventh. That is a day to remember for O'Sullivan in his home debut. Alex Overbay takes a swing and dribbles one off the end of the bat towards the third base coaching box. Foul ball moves it to one and two. Overbay out of Tumwater High School. He was his conference's MVP. As a senior in high school, his dad, Lyle, the conference's coach of the year. The number two first baseman out of the state of Washington in last year's recruiting class. I've met his dad a couple times when he was with the Pirates. As Overbay lines one foul out of plate on the right field side. Tumwater, and I'm very familiar with the area. We have a summer house up in that proximity. Tumwater is the home of Olympia Beer. The brewery is really? right there. Yep, that's the marquee building in Tumwater, just outside of Olympia. Sounds like my kind of town. Down one and two to Overbay. So the Tumwater native takes low. Count goes even at two. Yeah, one of the uh, the many brewing companies up there. Yeah, yeah, you uh, you can throw a rock and hit a between Oregon and Washington. You're gonna hit some type of brewery. I was gonna say I've spent some time in Bend, Oregon. Sim Great city. Similar to that. Yep. Overbay even at two. Anthony Pothoff delivers. Overbay fights it off. Another foul ball deposited into the seats down the right field line. You talked about O'Sullivan. You throw Schmidt on top of that. You know, Heft. These are newcomers that are making an immediate impact to this Rebel baseball program in year one that they're here. You, know, you add that to the returners. It's a pretty lethal lineup in the batter's box and in the field defensively. Another 2-2. Two -two. Another foul ball. This one popped straight back. One thing you can notice with Overbay, he's not getting cheated on these swings. That's one thing. You probably get some coaching from Coach Higgy. Two strikes, shorten up a little bit. But in high school, he, he just bombed away. He did pitch all the way through high school and was told that he may throw a little bit here. But for right now, First baseman only doing the DHing as of right now. Hit him. Inside fastball hits him. Not quite the way he wanted to earn his way on, but for Overbay, he'll take it as it extends the inning. Still no outs and runners on the corners. As Bailey Seeger comes in from the right hand side. For Alex Overbay, that's his third at bat of the year. He's on first with O'Sullivan. Cross from him at third. No outs. Two on for Bailey Seeger, who homered over the fence and left back in the sixth. Came after he struck out swinging in the fourth against Nick Hainline. And singled against the starter Stellano to lead off the second. Stellano on the hook for the loss. Sam Simon, seven shutout innings for his second straight start. He's at 98 pitches. Likely done for the day. As Seeger takes outside. Ball one on the fastball. Sam Simon... As mentioned, had never struck out more than three in a game heading into this year. Struck out four over seven shutout a week ago today. Seven days later, eight Ks over another seven shutout innings. 
good a start as you could ask for to the year. Seeger fouls one back. Waiting on deck, another pinch hitter. Gunnar Myro's spot in the lineup, but it's Isaac Rodriguez on deck. Isaac Rodriguez looks like he's going to pinch hit. Nothing in one count to Seeger. Short lead off first for Overbay. Foul ball hit down the right field side and out of play. A lot of foul balls, really aggressive approaches across the board for UNLV, not just today, but all weekend. We saw it on Friday with the 10 strikeouts. They started to see it a lot better yesterday. Absolutely. It's just an aggressive approach that's taught from the day they walk on campus here. They're going to get after it. They're going to be selective, but they're going to make sure that they're taking quality at bats. The count, one and two. Anthony Pothoff set at the belt. He deals from the stretch. High inside fastball taken by Bailey Seeger. Seeger, a well-traveled collegiate. Started off at Feather River College and spent two years at Pima Community College. Played at Cal State Bakersfield, attended New Mexico last year, but didn't play. Open stance from the right. Goes down and gets that one, but pulls it foul on the ground on the third base side. It's just a good protective swing right there. Something down low in the zone. Better off taking a hack at that than leaving it up to getting that backward K. Last year at Cal State Bakersfield, Seeker hit 301 as a roadrunner. Two homers, 13 RBIs, and just under 100 at bats. He's even at two as Potthoff delivers. That one's high. It's off the glove of the catcher, Hosey, but not far away enough for an advancement. We're talking about a lot of these new players finding their way into the game. Overbay on first after pinch hitting. Isaac Rodriguez on deck. Alex Pimentel, who came in. The goal is to win, obviously, but early in the season, you want to find out just what you have, and UNLV's been able to do that because they've been up early in every game. Well, absolutely. You can do that at the plate when you're up by eight runs. The challenge is you've got such a good pitching staff, you don't get a lot of guys going that you really want to see what they got, but that's what midweek games are for. That's why going to Utah Tech, playing BYU the following week, those are chances for them to get guys into the rotation and see what they got on the mound. So Isaac Rodriguez going to pinch hit for Gunnar Myro. He'll stay in and play Myro's third base spot defensively. Isaac Rodriguez ranked number one. The Marietta, California native. Pinch hitting out of the bottom of the lineup. Myro finishes 0 for 2 with a walk, a stolen base, and a run scored. Rodriguez making his second outing of the series. Two for six on the year. Batting with the bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh. Eight to nothing, the lead for UNLV as Rodriguez takes a called strike one. Isaac started the first game of the series, went one for three with an RBI base hit and a run score to go along with two strikeouts. You talked about the physique of Heft at second base mm -hmm. and power lifter type body. You got the same thing with Irod here. Listed at 5'10", a buck 80. Takes a big swing at a pitch, elevated out of the zone, but comes up empty quickly, nothing in two. In a pinch hit at bat, Seeger on first, Overbay on second, O'Sullivan on third, he doubled home Krizik to add on to the advantage here. Eight runs on ten hits for UNLV, nothing on five hits for Bradley. One error each way. The 0-2 to Rodriguez. He tried to check his swing on a pitch elevated out of the zone, but unable to hold up, says Paul Saucedo behind home plate. And Rodriguez, in a pinch hit plate appearance, strikes out swinging for out number two. I beg your pardon, out number one. Out number one. Yeah. Really Innings felt long already. It was a... Base hit followed by an error from Krizik, putting him on second base. O'Sullivan plated him on an earned run with a double. Hit by pitch, walk, strikeout. Brings up Rylan Charles at the top of the lineup, hitting with the bases loaded again. First baseman O'Brien in front of the bag. Everybody else double play depth. Charles jumps all over the first pitch, but fouls it into his own dugout on the first base side. Rylan is one of four today. Had a mammoth blast over the fence and right. Solo shot to lead off the fifth inning. Otherwise, he's popped out and grounded out twice to Bo Durbin at second. Struck out swinging in the sixth against Hainline. Anthony Pothoff, the fifth pitcher of the day for the Bradley Braves, gets a foul ball out of play. Down the left field side, Charles laid around on the heater. Looking at Pothoff's numbers off pitch comp, right now, 
fastball is right about 91, but his best pitch so far has been the changeup. He's got some movement on it. Spin rate's down under 1,000, so you're going to get movement off a good changeup with that low velocity and spin rate. Almost a palm ball type change. Yeah. He throws the fastball that freezes Charles for strike three. So back to back K's. Second time in as many at bats that Charles has struck out as well. With the bases still loaded, now with two outs, JP Heft looks to reach for the first time today. He's hitless. Hasn't reached either. He's flying out to right in his last two at bats. He's also popped out to first and grounded out to short. Nowhere to put him. O'Sullivan on third, Overbay on second, and Bailey Seeger with a short lead off the bag at first. Everybody deep around the infield now with two down. Pothoff's first pitch, just off the outside for a ball. Looking ahead to the top of the eighth inning, it'll be the top of the Bradley lineup due up. And Sam Simon threw seven shutout innings on 98 pitches. We'll see. Likely somebody else towing the slab for the Scarlet and Gray. Here's the 1-0. Heft gets bad on it, but pokes it down the right field side and over the clubhouse. Great facility here down the right field line. Yeah, the administration has done an outstanding job here with the upgrades over the years with the Anthony and Lindy Marnell clubhouse, which I'll put up against anybody on the West Coast. New field turf coming next year, new seats, shade structure. It's been incredible to watch. 1-1 one, one pitch. Routed to the right side, picked up by the second baseman. Durbin is feet to the base at second, in time for the out. And the throw to third is late. The run does score, though. That is the third out of the inning. I don't think Bradley they knew how many outs it. there were. So that's they lost a count. Fielder's choice up the middle on a bang-bang play. Very nearly beating that one was Seeger. The Rebels able to add on a, an RBI two-bagger from Brendan O'Sullivan. Makes it an 8-0 UNLV lead through seven innings. After seven shutout innings on the mound from Sam Simon, Dylan Rogers takes over. The Reno native will do so with an eight to nothing lead. UNLV dominating here in the final game of three against Bradley. Rogers making his college debut. Misses high and tight to the leadoff man for the Braves as Ryan Vogel moves ahead one and oh. Rogers did, did pitch a week ago today, so making his home debut as he dots the outside with a fastball, evens up the count. Rogers. Out of DeMonte Ranch High School in Reno. Pitched a week ago today, three innings, and the victory over Pacific. Induces a swing and a miss from Vogel as the count goes one and two. Rogers wearing number 29, in behind number 26, Sam Simon. Another seven shutout inning performance for Sam. Rogers bounces a pitch in, even at two. Final line for Simon, no runs on five hits, just one of them for extra bases. Did so over seven innings with one walk, eight strikeouts. By far a career best on 98 pitches. 
He's in line for the win. Rogers gets a call, strike three. Third strikeout in three and a third innings for the Reno native as he sets down Vogel via the strikeout. Third straight strikeout for Bradley hitters. And he'll try to change the tide with a pinch hitter. We'll see a lot of these late in the game like this as Michael Mylott, who had started the first two games, not in the lineup today, gets in in a pinch hit roll. At the risk of sound, sounded like a broken record. We talk about the pitching for the Rebels so far this year. I mean, this is exactly how you recruit. This is exactly how you coach and develop these kids. This has been outstanding. And you add that to the hitting structure that the Rebels have. This is a lethal combination. This one's crushed to right center on his horses. Charles center fielder on the move, able to grab it. What a first step in a route from Ryland Charles. That's what he does best out there. Yeah, his lateral movement out there in the outfield is absolutely fantastic. He's really good at getting the ball off the bat to find the best and optimal route to get to those balls that are hit deep into those uh, gaps. We talked about it last night. He did do a little 360 last night, but that's kind of what he does. He's really smooth at it, and uh, he just is a shutdown guy out there. A ball that left the bat at 100 miles an hour. Charles able to track it down. Timmy O'Brien takes a called strike. Rogers trying to breeze through a 1-2-3-8. Eight. eight to nothing, the UNLV lead. It's a ground ball straight back on a foul. Quickly, nothing in two. Rodgers went three innings in his most recent outing. And if he can go quickly and easily here, we may see another situation where the starter goes six plus, and the one reliever closes it out. I want to put the card ahead of the horse, but he misses outside here. O'Brien won for three with a couple of Ks thus far. That's a, a actually a veteran pitch right there for a freshman. O2, he got that one way off the corner, and it was a great breaking ball. Rogers out of the full wind, gets a swing and a miss for strike three. Easy peasy, one, two, three, top half of the eighth. Strikeout, fly out, strikeout, zeros across for the Braves, and their penultimate at bat. Rebels do up next for what they hope is the final time, leading it eight to nothing, heading into the bottom of the eighth inning. Number Bottom of the eighth, eight to nothing. The UNLV lead, along with Dan Dolby, Matt Neverett here on a Sunday afternoon. The Rebels looking for a sweep of Bradley, giving them would give them their sixth straight win. As Alex Pimentel stands in for the first time, came in as a defensive replacement two innings ago. Pimentel hitting in the three spot, followed by Kate Higgins and Austin Krizik. Dylan Rogers breezing through a one-two-three top of the eighth inning. Anthony Potha pitching in his second inning of work. There was a strike to Pimentel to get us underway. Alex Pimentel just trying to get something going, Dan. 0 for his first 21 this year. Yeah, I had a conversation with him last night. Talked about keeping his head up. Guy's a great baseball player and a great a great batter. So he's got to get a little bit of a momentum. It's, at this point, you're just looking for that first hit. Now, he came in as a pinch hitter the other night. Did hit a deep ball into the gap that was caught. But right now, he just needs to get some confidence going. 6'2", 205-pound senior from Anaheim. Stares down Pothoff, who delivers. 
crushes this one to center field. Back goes Vogel, still on the move as the center fielder. He can't get it. How about the hook on that thing as it bounces off the base of the wall? First hit of the year is a stand-up leadoff double for Alex Pimentel. And here's to hoping that that opens the floodgates for Pimmy. Yeah, quality at bat right there. That's what we're used to seeing from Pimmy over the last couple years. But what was more impressive right there was the way that the dugout reacted to that hit. They're still giving him a high five right now. This is what good teams do. They pull for each other. They, they encourage. They, they pick you up when you're down. So great job of hitting right there, but really important to have that teamwork behind you. 106 miles an hour off the bat. He crushed it. You think he was geared up for that pitch? <laughs> As that brings up Kate Higgins after Pimentel's 11th double with UNLV. He had 10 last year, first year with the program. Higgins takes a fastball for a strike from Anthony Pothoff in his second outing of the year. Higgy two for four, doubled and singled. In his first two at-bats, he struck out and grounded out since. Higgins batting in the cleanup spot. Playing his more natural right field defensively this year. He played all first base last year, more or less. Yeah, as Potthoff bounces one in, the new catcher, J.D. Bogart, knocking it down. They had a need at first base last year, and they had a really good outfield and an abundance of them out there. That transition over to first base is tough because new to him, having to make adjustments. Actually, I think it hurt his batting average a little bit last year, plus he had a little bit of an injury bug. Swings and misses on a changeup tumbling underneath the bat. That's a changeup we referenced earlier. It's best pitch so far. From Anthony Pothoff gets ahead one and two. New right fielder as well as Michael Mylott came in as a pinch hitter for Tyrese Johnson in the eighth and stays in. So Bogard behind the plate. Mylott out in right field. Off of second is Pimentel. His first hit of the year was a bomb of a double, if you can say that. Higgins hits a ground ball off the hands to second. Charging is Durbin. Nobody on the base at first. The pitcher over to cover. The leap forced him off the base, and everybody's safe. Yeah, that's one of those wheel plays right there where first baseman breaks over on that slow grounder. Ball ends up going to the second baseman. Pitcher doesn't get a good break off the mound. Ball was relayed over, but it actually was a little high, and Pothoff had to kind of jump for it. Higgy gets in, and that'll be an infield hit. Infield single for Higgins. Durbin with the high feed, looked a little bit late as well. It's one of those ones that dribbling ground ball, it's a rare situation where you actually have an advantage. Higgins runs better than most people give him credit for as well. He does, and from a coaching standpoint, they'll watch some film, Bradley will, and they'll probably tell O'Brien, after you make that initial two-step break and the ball's going into the hole, get back to the bag. Austin Krizik now batting with runners on the corners, eight to nothing, the UNLV lead. Riz takes a first pitch fastball, chest high for a strike. It's one for three with the single. He's been hit by a pitch as well and scored a run. Rebels with eight runs on 12 hits, nothing on five hits. Just one for extra bases from Bradley. They had just one extra base hit as well yesterday among their three hits as Krizik rolls this one fair past the diving third baseman Sobieszczyk into the corner. Pimentel scores to make it 9-0. Rounding third, heading to the plate is Higgins. Here comes the throw from the shortstop. It's way high. Safe is Higgins and the Rebels. 10 to nothing on top here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Aggressive base running on a base hit from Krizik. And again, you, we talked about the aggressiveness of the Rebels on the base path. That's going to be the game. That's going to be a Sunday mercy rule yeah, after travel day. Yeah, after seven innings, Correct. ten runs on the travel day, Yep. that's the mercy rule. Yep. Get our first one of the year. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fun for us. We get out of here a little early, but that's three days in a row. We're right around the two-hour mark. Sam Simon with a stellar outing, seven shutout innings in an eight-inning game. The bats back him up. Third time this year, they've scored double-digit runs, and the Rebels complete the clean sweep of Bradley. And they win their sixth straight game. Great way to start the year after dropping the opening day game to Pacific last weekend. You know, we've talked about it at nauseum over the last three days. The pitching has just been outstanding for the Rebels. The, the hitting we know is always going to be there. The defensive work in the field for the Rebels has been top-notch. So. 
Right now, this is a team that's playing with a lot of confidence. It's going to be interesting to see as we get into conference play how we're able to play against a team like San Jose State next weekend. Good mid midweek coming up on Tuesday against Utah Tech. I think we'll be able to see some more pitching, hopefully with anticipation of Jordan Hansen starting that game after a year's, year off. But this is a, a real fun time for the Rebels. You can tell by body language. If you watch body language in baseball players, it tells you a lot. And right now, we're walking tall, head held high, shoulders up. So it's been fun to watch. Great day to be a Rebel. Hard to not have good body language after six straight wins, including a 10 to nothing mercy rule win in eight innings. Rebels in St. George, Utah on Tuesday. We'll be back on the call here next Friday at 6 o'clock in the first Mountain West matchup of the year. As the preseason favorite, San Jose State, comes to Earl E. Wilson Stadium. That'll do it for us today from UNLV. From my partner, Dan Dolby, Sports Information Director, Jake Reaney, I'm Matt Neverett saying thanks so much for tuning in. Back at it next Friday here at Early Wilson.